Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling Media. Thanks for joining us. Nike Hot Seat today. Well, we've got a great guest and a regular guest indeed from Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. Let's go and join Craig Sesker live from Colorado Springs. Craig, how are you? I'm good, Scott. How are you doing? Good, buddy. You're on your way to Las Vegas, Nevada, and the Prowl event, the first ever pro wrestling league event. It'll be piggybacked on uh, on top of the... Uh, the Monster Mash, I think they're calling that, a tremendous event in Las Vegas. Uh, the Freak, freak, the freak Show, yeah. Monster Mash Freak Show. So it's actually the Freak Show. So let's talk a little bit about the Prowl event and the matchups uh, as you know them today. Yeah, it's going to be a good event. A lot of really good, outstanding wrestlers competing, some veterans and some young guys. And one of the better matchups is 57 kilos. You've got Andrew Hochstrasser who was second in the U.S. Open last year, and he'll take on Obi Blanc, who is returning to competition. He was a world team member in 2010, made the quarterfinals of the world. So look for a really good matchup there. Tyrell Fortune, at heavyweight, uh, he's a university world champ. He's been on the national team ladder. Um, look for him. Uh, really good matchup between Nate Carr Jr. and Kolchitsky. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yeah, good battle there, Deron Wynn. <laughs> Deron Wynn, who's a very talented wrestler and has dropped down a weight class last year. Had some pretty good results. He went, ended up going, uh, not placing at the World Team Trials. He was fourth at the U.S. Open. He's he's an exciting wrestler, and he's guaranteed he's going to put some points on the board, and I think he will. He's wrestling a really good veteran in Austin Trotman. So there's there's some good matchups in this event. And uh, it's, it's going to be a fun one, and a lot of the kids from the Freak Show will be around after their weigh-ins. So we should have a pretty good crowd for it tomorrow night at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Talk a little bit about uh, having that first event in Las Vegas, not necessarily a destination city when it comes to wrestling. I mean, if you look at how you split out uh, area codes and demographics where wrestling fans are, is this a good place to have the first ever Prowl event, or is it a convenient place to have it? It's a good place. I mean, people can obviously identify wrestling in Vegas. The U.S. Open's been there a lot of years. Obviously, a great world championships was just held there last month. Feels like we just left. It feels like Jordan Burroughs just won that won that gold medal in the last match and great event there. And to to go in conjunction with a, with a big high school and youth event makes perfect sense because you're going to have a lot of people there, and you know, gives the kids something to look at too i mean you know obviously you know Obi's a world team member tyrell fortune will be in the mix to make the olympic team i believe and you know there's there's some good guys there and you know something the kids can look to and you know and vegas has been a has been a good uh city for a lot of these big events we're talking with Craig Sesker, Tight Mercury Wrestling Club, director of PR, live from his home in Colorado Springs. He's on his way to Las Vegas a little bit later on this morning where he'll be covering the event and providing uh, some news stories that will be obviously coming out of the event, the Prowl event. It's the first ever uh, edition of the Pro Wrestling League. And, Craig, if you can, just give us a little background on what the Pro Wrestling League is designed to do and what it might look like even a year from now. Yeah, it's an, it's an opportunity to, to give some of the clubs a matchup. You know, it's Titan Mercury's wrestling, uh, Finger Lakes Wrestling Club out of Ithaca, New York, and, at Cornell. And, um, so it's it's a chance. You know, these guys don't get a, a chance to wrestle in a lot of these dual meet events. It's, there's kind of a team component to it where there's a little pride involved with clubs. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's a good idea. And, you know, these, these athletes are going to make a little bit of money, which is good. You know, it's always good to, to get a little, uh, financial boosting. And so it's, and it's, you know, dual leagues are fun for the fans. And if you've been to the world cup and you've been out there, Scott, um, it's just a different type of format. And it's, it's also a good opportunity for these wrestlers, you know, to get some matches because, this season, things are going, important events are coming quickly. I mean, the U.S. Open is in December, and that's a huge, huge event. I mean, we're only two months away from the U.S. Open, which is going to really set the stage, you know, and the seeds for the for the Olympic trials in Iowa City in April. Yeah, we talk about uh, the U.S. Open. That's going to be different this year, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be. It'll be in December. 
And, you know, a lot of the reason behind that is because the Olympic trials are only a couple of weeks after the NCAA tournament. Right. So, and there's, and there's a, there's an Olympic trials qualifier right after the NCAA. So like the NCAA champion is going to get into the uh, Olympic trials and freestyle. And so the guys that don't get in there will have, have a chance for, to qualify for the trials between NCAAs and the trials. So obviously the U S open, um, that pairs down the field for the Olympic trials to where you only have, you know, maybe a dozen or less wrestlers per weight class. So it's just, it's a different format this year because the Olympic trials are so early. Obviously the Olympics are in August, you know, they're not as late in the game. They're not in September this year. It's, it's almost an embarrassment of riches where we're rushing toward a fire and it seems as if the fire this year burning brightly, uh, we come off the world championships. Team USA won five. Uh, expectations, perhaps, were at nine. Um, they have to qualify a whole bunch of weights for the Olympic uh, for the Olympic Games. Uh, how do you see Team USA in its preparation at this point, knowing what you know? There's a lot of work to do. I mean, there's only uh, five weight classes qualified out of eighteen, and that's that's low. I mean, usually. Typically, the U.S. has had at least half of the weight classes qualified. So, um, you know, and the U.S. Had, did have four world champions uh, in Vegas. and they, But, you know, three there were three world medals won in uh, non-Olympic weight classes. So there's a Pan Am Olympic qualifier in uh, Frisco, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. That'll be the first weekend in March. And it's always a huge event. I mean, it's hugely, hugely important to qualify there because after that, there's two qualifiers overseas, and that, that's for anybody that doesn't make it. So there might be 40 or 50 people in a weight class. So obviously finishing in the top two at the Pan Am Olympic qualifier towards obviously just the Pan American countries, that is huge for the United States. The United States getting ready to head to the uh, World Club Cup. Uh, if I'm saying that correctly, I have t- trouble putting all the C words together, but that'll take place in Iran. Uh, Wayne Boyd, uh, uh, shepherding athletes to that event last year with some success, coming back with a check and, of course, a cup. But uh, this year, looking for an even better performance. What are your thoughts on that event in Iran? Uh, it's going to be a great event. I, I remember last year putting together some of the results from back here and uh, great competition. Uh, there's some great, great wrestling over there. They're obviously wrestling. You know, they're one of the meccas in the world with wrestling. They, I heard that like it was on live TV last year and like 90% of the country turned in, Wow, which, uh, which, which is just unheard of, but it's Iran. And, you know, they're going to send, U.S. is going to send a strong team. They're in the process of finalizing a roster, and I know they're, they're working on getting some visas going. And, and uh, you know, the, the Iranian people love having the Americans there to wrestle, and they're, they're treated like rock stars wherever they go. And so it's, it's a really good event. It's a really good opportunity, too, for some, some pretty good wrestlers from Titan Mercury. And there's, you know, there's going to be a few other guys from other clubs that are going to jump in. That it's just a great opportunity to get some great matches, and it's and it's a great event. And there's and it's, I believe it's fifty thousand dollars for the winning team, so there's a little bit of money at stake too. Yeah, I think second place last year paid twenty five, and hey, no matter what, it's not going to offset. It served to offset a little bit the uh, the cost of flying the athletes over, preparations, visas, all the things that go into travel worldwide. But specifically, um, the politics that are involved. And wrestling has done a really great job, in my estimation, of trying to erase political pressure and putting wrestling forward and first uh, amongst the athletes in the countries that are, that are competing. Would you agree we've done a good job with that? Oh, yeah. That was one of the big keys to the Olympic fight in 2013 was the, you know, the solidarity that was shown between the United States and Russia, which obviously plays, played a huge, huge role in keeping wrestling on the Olympic program. And then, of course, Iran, where wrestling is a national sport. There. I know people find that hard to believe, but it is very much the truth. And, 
you know, it's, you know, even, even when stuff was going on with Russia and Ukraine, I remember at the World Cup seeing the Russian coaches sitting and having dinner with Ukrainian coaches and a lot of friendship and, and mutual respect there. And, and uh, you know, uh, I know Christakis Alexandridis, the Russian coach, and, uh, you know, Reza Ali, the, the Iranian coach, they, they've talked about it publicly and just said, hey, you know, we enjoy competing against these teams and we're, you know, we have a, that we consider them our friends, you know, and there's just kind of that mutual bond that is one of the things that makes wrestling really special. We're talking to Craig Sesker, Tight Mercury Wrestling Club, director of PR. Uh, look for his work, highly respected author, writer, reporter, and very knowledgeable on the sport of wrestling. And, of course, Tight Mercury, lucky to have him. Uh, putting a voice in many ways to everything that is transpiring as Titan Mercury continues to grow. Uh, switching gears here, and it's a sad, sad story indeed, but uh, uh, the Reno Tournament of Champions founder, Ross Aguirre, has passed away in a car accident. Uh, and, and I'm just wondering, from your point of view, Craig, and you knew uh, Ross how, how well, I don't know, but what kind of hold does the passing of Ross Aguirre leave in the sport of wrestling, specifically on the West Coast? You know, I, I didn't know him personally. I, I, you know, obviously know what what they've done with that tournament. And it's it's a great event, and and it's just you know it's sad when we lose a great leader of the sport like that. And and uh, obviously, just uh, from what I've read and some of the comments people have made, I mean, obviously, a very well respected person in the sport of wrestling and and uh you know it's 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 sad when we, we lose people like that I mean, those are those are the types of people that just you know keep the sport up and running and you know obviously that's that's a big event and very important event mm. again craig sesker joining us uh it'll be this saturday night in des moines iowa while you're in las vegas uh with tony hager from takedown and and uh of course, the new global wrestling TV show. Wait till you see this episode. You want to see funny. Uh, so you'll be working with Hager. But I'll be here with Gable and company at the uh, Dan Gable uh, Hall of Fame uh, Gala uh, to help raise money and awareness for the sport. But uh, uh, it's going to be a special weekend indeed. Uh, we get a chance to celebrate one of the great guys this sport has ever known. Dan Gable, he's the man. You know, he's nobody's done more for the sport, and um, you know, I consider him a friend. And he's he's the man. I mean, just love the guy, and, and you know, he's obviously had a huge impact as a wrestler and coach, and he's probably having his big biggest impact as an ambassador for the sport. I mean, he will do anything for wrestling, and he's just a really genuine, great guy. Let's switch gears one more time. Uh, the NEI has continued to grow, even in the face of challenges across the country. Many universities uh, and college athletic departments are facing. Uh, we're seeing the NEI post some, you know, great results athletically. But Grandview comes into the thing as a four-time uh, champion, and they come into the year in the preseason rankings as number one. Can anybody defeat Grandview uh, University here in Des Moines, Iowa? Not from what I've seen, I think they just continue to to stockpile star, star athletes, and they're getting a lot of a lot of guys from you know they come from Division One level. And they're recruiting a lot of good kids, and they've got great facilities, and they've got great coaching staff, and um, it's a good level of wrestling. And you know, there's there's some definitely some good programs out there, but you know, it's going to take a pretty special performance to to beat them. Oh, absolutely. Craig, i got to believe you're excited to get on the road. I appreciate you taking the time to roll through some of the headlines of the news and what's going on specifically with Tight Mercury Wrestling Club and all the athletes that they uh, they support and sponsor. Uh, obviously, we're, we're looking forward to seeing your face on Global Wrestling News in the, uh, in the coming weeks. So hopefully you'll get a chance to stand in front of the camera with uh, with Tony Hager in Las Vegas, and that will be the start of your uh, many appearances on that program in your new position. I'll look forward to it. I hope you have fun in Las Vegas. 
Yeah, thanks, Scott, and, and good luck to you guys with your event this weekend. Sounds like it's going to be a good time. Absolutely. Sandy Stevens will be joining me here in Des Moines. So it's uh, an outstanding weekend as we celebrate the sport here. You guys with your activities and competition and, of course, the kickoff of the Prowl event, the first ever event for the Pro Wrestling League. It's going to be fun, fun indeed. Craig Susker has been our special guest in the Nike Hot Seat today, brought to you in part by our friends at Global Wrestling News and, of course, the Titan Mercury Wrestling Club of San Marino, California. Craig, thanks for the time. Thanks, Scott.